Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be looking at a lever gun. And if you've been with the channel, you may know that I did a collaboration last year with Greg from OG's Danger Show. And man, that was such a fun two day get together with him. We spent two days at the range and did nothing but lever guns and i think that that was really really cool first time i ever shot a 4570 uh he got to shoot my marlin 336w we did some ballistic testing on some port shoulders uh, so if you're interested in that i'll leave a card at the end of the video so you can check that out but that series right there really kind of started the ball rolling for me when it came to lever guns i had just purchased my very first one which was a marlin 336w and since then i've been kind of on a bit of a kick um not as big as other firearms obviously but um lever guns kind of are, well, kind of cool you know so with all of that being said uh i was reached out by g-force to look at their lvr 357 huckleberry ltac and that is one heck of a name uh, for a 357 magnum lever gun but uh it was actually pretty cool when they sent me a picture of it and uh asked if i was interested in taking a look at it i was like huh this actually really kind of cool got some traditional look in the back here we got some modern look in the front man this is actually pretty freaking cool so i was like yeah let's take a look at it so full disclosure i'm not getting paid to say anything good bad or indifferent g-force did send this to me but I'm going to talk about the good things, talk about the bad things, and let you guys decide on what you think about this and whether or not this is right for you. Now, one of the biggest pluses about this particular lever gun is the fact that this is a very budget-friendly uh, lever gun. You're looking at uh, prices anywhere around that 550 to 650 price range depending on when where you buy it from and the type of setup that you have whether it's just um, you know the walnut stocks all the way through or if you have the mlock stuff up front synthetic in the back or wood in the back it's really up to you guys on how you want to configure it they have several different configurations they also have two different barrel lengths they have the 20 inch barrel length and then they have the 16.5 inch barrel length that i have on this particular one right here this is going to be an eight plus one capacity magazine tube. So, um, you know, pretty decent mag capacity for a 16 inch barrel. Uh, it's going to have a threaded barrel straight from the manufacturer, which I think is a added bonus. And that's going to be half by 28 threads on this barrel. So you don't have to worry about turn turning it down should you want to add a muzzle device or direct thread a suppressor on it. That is a uh, really cool added bonus. It has fiber optic front sight and an adjustable rear sight that is integrated into this Picatinny section. And as you can see, I have a red dot on here. And we'll talk about that red dot here in just a second because um, this thing was fairly inexpensive and really surprised me. So there is that. Now, the action on this is going to be an 1892 style action. So as you actuate the bolt, the spent casings are going to eject straight up out of the top. Now, to be frankly honest with you, that's not my favorite action when it comes to lever guns. I prefer the Marlin 336W. That's just what I'm used to. That's what I like. Uh, all of my firearms, all of my rifles have always had ejection ports to the side. So having something shoot up out of the top is... Um, a little different for me so just uh, keep that in mind if you like the 1892 style of action there you go it's ready to go right there so with that being said obviously as you can tell it's got uh, m lock handguard here so you can mount all of your different lights lasers and everything else on it uh, it has a shell caddy right here for you to add four additional rounds so uh, if you shoot through your eight plus one that you have loaded up in here you can manually feed either into the side gate or through the top here you can just place another round in to get that next shot off as quickly as possible so uh, it does have a um, like a half cock here 
safety lever is on top as well. So uh, I, I really don't like the safety lever. Um, it's just really wonky to me. I am again used to the cross bolt type safety when it comes to the Marlins, but again that is a bit of a difference when it comes to the 1892 versus the 1894 and um, newer lever guns that came out in the 20th century so there is that all right so let me take a second to talk about this red dot real quick um, i wanted to integrate the review of the red dot in with this rifle because uh, I went ahead and threw it on here, and it's, it's probably going to stay on here, to be frankly honest with you. This is the Fox Army FXA-12 Pro, which is a RMR footprint that takes a 1632 battery uh, that is top-mounted. It's got shake-awake technology. It has 10 brightness settings, uh, eight of which are daylight, and then two that are uh, night vision compatible. Uh, it is going to mount very easily to whatever you're wanting to use it for, whether it be a pistol, a lever gun like this, or maybe even a shotgun with not only the pick section mount, but also that RMR footprint. It's going to make it uh, fairly easy to mount whatever you need it to go on. It is going to have a multi-reticle system. So that circle dot that you're used to from say like hollow sun, uh, that's pretty nice. It's going to be a two MOA dot with a 36 MOA circle. So you can switch through those to have either the dot, the circle, or the circle dot. And that's pretty much what you should expect from most of these red dots coming out now. In addition to that, if I didn't already mention it, it's going to have uh, like 30,000 hours of battery life. So uh, exactly what you would expect from these types of red dots. So needless to say, price point on this is somewhere around that $120 mark. So something that's not going to break the bank. You could probably capitalize on a discount code from somewhere. If you guys are interested in more information about this particular red dot, I'm gonna leave additional details in the pinned comment. So swing on by and check that out as well. All right, so let's talk about the shooting experience of this. Uh, first and foremost, shooting Monarch 158 grain 38 Special from a 16.5 inch barrel. Whew, that's a lot of fun. Very low recoiling, not very loud. So if you add a suppressor to this, it's going to be even quieter. Um, probably like, I don't I hate to say this, it's not like going to be like movie quiet, but it's going to be very, very close. Uh, I do know that uh, shooting something very similar to this at SHOT Show last year, it was like ridiculously quiet. So that is something really, really cool. Uh, again, something like this just has a vibe to it and I really, really do uh, like the look of it. And um, in shooting lever guns is just fun, right? So there's that. However, I did run into two issues. Um, one is probably user error. And that is where um, I had one of the rounds go vertical. And it happened a couple of times in the first 100 rounds. Uh, the round that was supposed to be fed into the chamber for whatever reason went vertical. And it could be because I was short stroking the action on this. And that's a big problem with lever guns and even kind of... pump shotguns as well as if you short stroke it, you're either not going to get that next shell in or you're going to cause some type of jam. So I think that was one of the issues that I ran into, uh, user error. All right, so the second issue that I ran right, into was actually kind of weird. I wasn't sure if it was user error or if there's something wrong with the internals. But essentially, as I would work the action, if I put a little bit too much oomph into it, a little bit too much elbow grease and work the action fast, it was ejecting the shell with the next round as well. So two pieces of brass were coming out and I'm like, that's not right. Uh, it took me a couple of times to go through that to really understand that it was a um, 
a, a situation where if I was going fast, that's when it would happen. If I would slow down and be a little bit more intentional with the movement of the lever uh, and the action that it didn't have a problem at that point. Needless to say, I did reach out to G-Force Arms and ask them, hey, this is this is an issue. I don't know what's going on with it. Would you mind taking a look at it? And they're like, absolutely. They're going to send me a uh, mailing label to send this back to take a look at it to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the internals. And if there is, they're going to fix it or replace it. So that was good to see. Uh, and I know you guys are like, oh, well, of course, naturally they did that because you're a YouTuber. And I was like, well, I called their customer service and acted like I was a normal customer. So that was good to see. So thanks to uh, GeForce for, you know, getting right on that. And uh, at the time of the recording, I should have the mailing label tomorrow. So that is... Uh, that was good to see. I was really appreciative of that. So there's that. This is the first 100 rounds on this. So we are going to uh, see what happens after I get this sent back in, have them take a look at it. They're going to send it back to me. And we're going to put uh, another few hundred rounds through this and uh, get you a follow-up video in the future. So uh, there you go. Really, again, like the look of this and uh, think that it is uh, a, something that might suit a lot of you guys out there who are interested in these kind of western style rifles so there you have it but let me know what you guys think sound off in the comment section down below are lever guns your things what do you think about the g-force arms lvr 357 huckleberry ltac <laughs> quite a name but uh, at the very least, uh, let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comment section down below. Really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking this out. Again, we're going to be doing a follow-up on this as soon as I get it back from GeForce to see what, uh, what they have to say is the issue. And then I'll report back to you guys to let you guys know. We'll get another couple hundred rounds through it as well and get that follow-up video just as quickly as possible. With all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by. We'll catch you guys later. Take it easy, y'all. Freedom through strength. Bye.